All right, for today's project, we are gonna be making a cute little summer tote bag. I'm using my Cricut Explorer 2. I have a standard grip mat, my brayer, my weeding tools, a few different colors of vinyl. Obviously, you can use whatever color you like. I'm just gonna use my paper trimmer to help cut down my vinyl pieces. And I'm gonna be applying this to a canvas tote bag. This is a really lightweight little bag that I'm gonna be using today. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my heat press to actually press this all together. So instead of using my easy press, which you can use if that's what you choose to use, I'm gonna go ahead and do my heat press today. And I'm gonna show you, uh, once we get into the design space, part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you a handy little guide that I found that you can print out that will help you keep track of your time and temperature for your vinyls that you have. So let's go ahead and get into design space. I'll show you how to get this all arranged and we'll get it cut and put it all together so we can make ourselves a cute little summer tote bag. Okay, so here we are inside a design space and this is how your SVG is gonna look when it lands on your canvas. So the first thing I wanna do, like always, I'm gonna show you guys why I do what I do. I went ahead and ungrouped everything and you can look over on your layers panel and you can see that the way that the design is set up and I'm gonna show you why I have it this way. So with this design, let's ungroup this again. In my head, I was thinking if you wanted to slice this word summer out of the middle sun part here, you could do that if you don't want to cut it out of white vinyl. This is completely up to you. I'm going to use white vinyl because my bag is kind of um, like a tan color that I'm going to be using and I want this to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to be using white vinyl. I'm going to be laying it on top. But this right here, which is also the same color as this part here, which is part of like the uh, reflection and also down here. I left that separate and the reason that I did that was to make it easier for you when you go to slice this out if you want to. So you would just go down here and this is the white part. We're going to go ahead and ungroup this as well. And then you can come see right here. These are all the stars. The double stars are actually connected but they are individual so that if you wanted to slice these out of this, you could do that. You could slice this one out of this one. You just need to go through and ungroup your different layers right here. Okay, so what I wanted to show you, if you wanted to take this summer part and then hit your shift button and grab this, then you could slice this. Now remember, you can only slice two items in Design Space. If you have more than two, it won't slice. So then you would go through here and you would delete that one and you would delete this one. And now you have it sliced through. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave the white. I don't want it sliced. So I am actually going to take my white bits, these little stars right here, and this part of summer, and I'm going to attach that. And then this part right here, if you hide it, you can see what I'm talking about. These are also grouped, so you could ungroup that. If you wanted to, before you attach those stars, like I just said, you could go through. Let me go ahead and un unattach those so you can see this right here. We would ungroup this. So if you wanted to slice, say, these stars, through here and ungroup that. You would grab this color right here, hit your shift button and grab those stars, and then you would slice those. And then those stars would be sliced out of there. So that's why I set this up the way that it is. So if you could customize it the way you wanted to, or if you wanted to change the colors of like each individual um, row here, if you wanted to change the colors on your stars, you could do that. But I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and I'm going to grab my summer and all my stars, and I want that to cut all together. So I am going to attach that. Then I want to come through and grab all those yellow pieces, and I want to attach that because I want those to cut together. Now all it did was it moved to the front, so that's why you don't see those uh, the white parts that were there. And then I'm going to go ahead and oh, maybe I missed one. Let me see. One, two, three, attach. Okay, so then this is part of the orange. You can see it up here, which is also down here. So I'm going to grab those two and attach that. I want to attach all of my blue or green or whatever color it is that you want to be. And then this part right here is not attached. It's just grouped. This is the tan color, so I'm going to attach that. So if I come back up here, right click and bring to the front, you don't really need to do that just so you can, I just wanted it to be so you can see what the design is. So my tote bag that I'm going to be using, I'm going to unlock this, I'm going to put my dimensions as, is 14 inches wide by 15 inches tall. 
back this up a little bit and I'm going to turn this into a guide so we can see through it. And then I'm going to send this to the back. Okay, and then I'm going to make this 11 inches wide. So I need to remember that there are seams on the side and then there's a handle. So I want this to be in the center. I want to see how that looks. To me, I think that looks okay because this is a tote bag. Now, if this was going to be like in a frame or something, I would obviously make this bigger because I'd want to fill more space. But you have to remember when you have a tote bag, um, you're going to be carrying it and you really aren't going to see the whole outside of it anyway. It's very rare that your bag is going to be completely flat. But this bag in particular that I have is very um, flexible. It's really thin. It's not um, a heavy canvas or cotton. It's just a lightweight cotton. So I'm going to go ahead and do this this size right here. Okay, so now what I was saying was I'm going to go ahead and I want to flip this because I'm going to be using HTV rather than when I get to my cut screen, which I will show you here. Let's go ahead and save this. So when I get to my cut screen, being that I'm using HTV, I need to mirror everything. I would have to come through on each screen and mirror them. So I'm just trying to save myself a step here. And what I will do is I'll just grab this, come up here and flip it. And now I don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and save that again. So being that I'm going to be using HTV, um, I know a lot of times we get questions about time and temperature for the vinyl. I like to use, um, if you are familiar with the website called 143 Vinyl, I'm going to show you this right here. This is their website and they have a material cutter and press setting. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. I have it printed out and I keep it by my heat press. What you can do is click right here to download the files. And now you can see right here, they have it for adhesive vinyl and for um, heat transfer vinyl. This is adhesive vinyl. This is the brand. Obviously, this is what they sell. Your Cricut, they're telling you what settings to use. They're telling you for silhouette and they're telling you for brother scan and cut. But what I like, heat transfer vinyl. I am going to be using this right here, Caesar Easy Weed. Obviously, on my Cricut, I'm going to be using iron on tells you for silhouette and then it comes over here and tells you your pressing time and temperature. So I'm always saying make sure you check your manufacturer's uh, time and temperature for your vinyl. So if you purchase it from them or at wherever you purchase it from, if this is the type of vinyl that you're using, right here are all your settings. It's also telling you warm or cold peel. So you can kind of scan through this. But like I said, I have this printed out and I have it by my heat press. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I will definitely leave the link for this. Um, on my website along with the blog, po the blog post for this project so you guys can have easy access to that. It's just a handy little guide if you have a piece of vinyl that you aren't really sure because you didn't keep the instructions. This is a really good guide to look at. Okay, so now let's go ahead and click make on this. I'm going to be using my Explore Air 2 and showing you how that is all set up right here. And the pieces are too big for me to move around. I usually like to try and combine down to one um, mat or two mats however I can, but this is what I'm going to be cutting it out on. I have my Explorer 2 set on my iron-on setting, uh, depending on what machine that you're using. Obviously, like I said, we're going to be using HTV, so put it on the setting that works best for your machine. I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out, and then I will show you how to layer this and put this all together using my heat press. Okay, remember we're using heat transfer vinyl, so your shiny side goes down. My dial is set to iron-on. Actually, I have it at iron-on plus. It's one little notch over. So I'm go ahead and get that cut. All right, now that we have all of our vinyl weighted, I went ahead and turned on my heat press already. I have it at 305. So while that is warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and weed this, and then I will show you how to get it all put together.
All right, so here we are at the heat press. I have my temperature set at 305. It's a little dusty, haven't used this one for a while, so that's why I wanted to make sure I got in a tutorial with my large heat press. Went ahead and set it, like I said, at 305. This is the guide that I was showing you that I printed out. Go ahead and I flip this over to heat transfer vinyl, and I find the vinyl that I'm using, and right here it says 305, 10 to 15 seconds, so that's how I remember it. So go ahead and set that aside. The first thing I'm going to do, a pre-press on my bag. I have a pressing pillow down here, I have my Teflon sheet, and I have magnets connecting my Teflon sheet to my heat press so I don't forget to put it on. But I'm just going to go ahead and do just a quick pre-press just to get some of the moisture out. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. I don't want to do a big crease, I just want to do a light crease to help me find the center. This bag takes creases and likes to hang on to them, so I don't want to do it very hard. Okay, so now I can see where my center is. And I'm going to go ahead and line up. And I know that that center part of the sun is the center of my design. I'm going to go ahead and lightly fold this right in the center. It's not going to hurt anything. I just want to make sure I find the center of my design here. So all I did was I just folded it over and just gave it a light crease so you can see where the center is. I was having a hard time with this vinyl here. I'm not sure if it's because I'm a basement crafter and my area down here is a little more humid. I do have a dehumidifier going all the time, but that could be why. Some of my vinyl, <clears throat> excuse me, I was having a hard time weeding it. And I actually want to see what this looks like. Because this is rolling, I'm just going to go, you don't have to do this step, this is just something that I'm going to do. I want to put a piece of heat tape down here, because I want it to lay flat. And I'm going to get a piece of parchment paper and put another piece of the design on so that I make sure that it is actually centered. So I've said a hundred times, I can tell myself that it is, but unless I actually see it, I don't believe it. So this is just a piece of parchment paper, and the reason I'm putting it down is I don't want my vinyl layers to stick together. So I have this, and then the bottom of my design has that sand part down here. So I want to just make sure that this is going to be centered okay. So I have a picture of my design printed out and I'm trying to visualize. Make sure I have enough room on the bag. And I think I do, I think that looks okay. All right, and since we are layering, we are not gonna do the complete press. We're just gonna go ahead and do Teflon sheet like I said is on. Just want to hold it down maybe five to seven seconds. I'm going to bring that up. And we're going to go ahead and pull that off. Do it very slowly because you didn't do a full press. You want to make sure that your design is going to stick down. First layer. And my next one, I think I'm going to go ahead and do this orange one here. I'm not going to do a full press, just enough to get the vinyl to release. And 
then I'm going to do this one. I'm going to want to layer this one right on top. All right, and then now I'm going to go ahead and just let it... That'll get rid of any of the marks that were left over from the, the carrier sheets that were on top of the other pieces of the vinyl. And there we go. Hope you guys can see that. It's kind of hot in here. Well, there we go, guys. There is our cute little summer tote bag. If you guys like this week's design, you can find the free SVG in the freebie library. It is design number 207, I believe. On the blog post, you will find a link to all the supplies I used and the name of the font and a link to where you can find that as well, if you'd like to know. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I would love for you guys to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet. Give this video a like. It really helps the algorithm so Facebook knows to show you guys the things that I make, and I would appreciate it. If you make it, Come on over to the Facebook group and show it off because I love seeing what you guys make. But that's it, guys. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Until next time, have a wonderful day on purpose.